If you are new to us here, you are very welcome. Let me introduce ourselves. We are a group of sinners, each and every one of us, and we know it. I know it about myself. The people in the pews with you know it about themselves. We are here because we know we need God's mercy, and we have found it in Jesus Christ. So one of my priest buddies starts his homily at least once a month. I'm going to repeat it. If you're new to us here, you're very welcome. Let me introduce ourselves. We are a group of sinners, each and every one of us, and we know it. I know it about myself. The people in the pews with you know it about themselves. We are here because we know we need God's mercy. And we have found it in Jesus Christ. Now, every single time that my, my buddy starts his homily this way, a couple days later, he receives an email. Father, I do not like how you started that homily. You're calling us sinners. So he responds in a pastoral way, saying, did I lie? Are we not sinners? Do you want me to start the homily this way instead? If you're new to us here, you're not actually that welcome. Let me introduce ourselves. We are perfect in every way. We are not greedy. We are not dishonest. We are not adulterous or even like the rest of the Catholic churches around us. We can do everything on our own, and there's no need of God's mercy or forgiveness because we're perfect in every way, and humble too, by the way. Of course not. Of course not. Of course, today's gospel lays it out so explicitly. The Pharisee coming, convinced of his own righteousness, that he can do everything on his own. God, look at me. I'm perfect in every way, and I'm not like the rest of humanity. Whereas the tax collector, oh, the tax collectors we hear about in the gospel, right? The most perfect prayers that he could have. Oh, God, be merciful to me, a sinner, beating his breast. Of course, as we pray the confidior, what do we do? Through my fault, through my fault, through my very grave fault. We come before the Lord every single Mass. And we acknowledge that we are sinners in need of God's mercy. And we come here because we know that God, as we hear in Scriptures over and over again, is rich in mercy. What does it mean to be, to be merciful, by the way? It's not only God's forgiveness, which it is, but it's also his helping grace, his helping hand. To know that we're not called to do everything just by ourselves, but through, with, and in God. And so we come here week after week acknowledging, yes, that we are not perfect, that we are a community of sinners, and we come before God and say, help me. I need your help. I need your love. I need your grace. And to know, of course, this is what he wants to bestow upon us. He wants to bestow upon us all that we need. All we have to do is come before him and say, help. And he's going to help like no one else and nothing else can. He is the divine physician who heals us of our wounds, who heals us of our sins, great and small. He is there to help. You know, often we may think, well, what happens to this, this tax collector who goes away, by the way, what? Justified. What happens to him? Well, next week we're going to hear about another tax collector. We're going to hear about Zacchaeus. Zacchaeus who is seeking out 
God. Seeking out Jesus, he wants to see this man that, he, that he's heard about. And so he runs and he climbs that tree and something very interesting happens. Jesus sees him. And what does he do? He says, Achaeus, today I desire to be in your home. I desire to dine with you. And all of a sudden there's this huge transformation in Zacchaeus' life. He's receiving truly Jesus Christ into his home and he changes his ways. You know, every single time that we, we come to Mass, we come before our Lord and he says, I too want to come into your home. And even more explicitly, I want to come into your life, into your soul, into your body. And so we come and receive him in the Eucharist. And he dwells inside of us, transforming us. We're able to, to share in his divinity. And he's giving us that, that, that help that we need. How beautiful is it that God is telling us you don't need to do this by yourself. Life, it's hard. Your week may have been very, very difficult. This happens. But are you going to God and asking for help or not? To let him in. It doesn't mean that it's still not going to be hard. It's still going to be hard. But you're not doing it by yourself. Or maybe there's a sin you've been trying to overcome. And you've been white knuckling it, right? Sometimes we're good at that, white knuckling stuff. And yet God is there saying, let me help. I can help. I want to walk this journey with you. I want to run this race of life with you as we hear from St. Paul in his letter to Timothy. And that we're able to, to keep the faith, not just by ourselves, as Paul even said. He said, everyone abandoned me. Except for who? Except for Jesus. You see, God is never going to abandon us. He desires to be with us in, in, in those very great times where everything seems to be going great and swell and amazing, but also in those difficult times, in those dark times, when everything seems to be falling apart. God's saying, can I please help? And he's going to help so much sometimes He's going to take it all. And all we have to do is follow. And so today, as we come together, every single time we come to Mass, we acknowledge who we are. We're not perfect. St. John the Baptist, we're, we're sinners. It's true. But we're sinners who are seeking out God, seeking out his mercy and finding everything we need through, with, and in God's infinite love.